this is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangrath. BTL is presented by Lorance, Bass Cat Boats, Aptco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, and Pro Guy Batteries. Hit him with the hook, Jeffries. PTL coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL bass talk live where we are going to talk bass fishing and yes it is the first in studio guest back to back in studio guest to kick off the 2023 season and matt looney from pro guide batteries also runs a bass for becker's charity also fishes toyota series also fishes the npfl where else have you worked in the industry what i mean you've been around for a number of years in a, in a bunch of different capacities yeah yeah man i do a lot of like content creation stuff uh I do some consulting for different bait companies things like that on the marketing side but uh it's a great industry i'm excited to be a part of it uh, and obviously excited to be able to do this show again with you all right, so here's the deal. So last year I took over uh I took over BTL from Jeffries. Right. And if you see I'm taking my headsets off. So this is the only issue that I've had in the new studio, Matt. I talked with you a little bit about it. So between my sound card and my, like my Windows 11 and and 11, I have I have a, a sound card issue where like the wind does not like to talk to it. So everything works fine, but I can't hear myself in the headsets. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going like big time podcasts without the headsets for the go. rest of the show. And I'll just do the sound. But uh, OK, uh, long story short. So last year, one of the things that I wanted to do was bring in industry insiders. Right. Right. And I realized that I've been in this game for a long time and there was like some basic stuff that i probably should have known about that i didn't i was like screw it i'll be the guinea pig like a lot of people have watched me kind of grow up in this deal from the time i was in my early 20s so i had you on to talk about pro guide batteries right and the lithium craze and how batteries work and all that well i didn't think it i didn't think it would be a particularly riveting show to be honest with you <laughs> And, and over 20,000 people have downloaded and watched that battery video. And you're saying, man, like, you know, when you're going to shows and stuff, you had a bunch of people that were like, hey, I listened to you on BTL, a lot of questions about it. So obviously then I felt better about myself because it proved that I wasn't the only one that was not completely up to date or understood exactly how the power plant to the battery situation worked in the boat. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I said it last year. I say it all the time, especially at shows. I feel like just in general, batteries probably cause the most issues for anglers, mm -hmm. and it's the thing they know the least about. So any kind of information uh, that you can get on it is great. And and the other side of it is uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there, and a lot of it you know true, not true. It, people don't know what to believe, uh, and so when you can kind of put a face to a name to a company, it definitely helps understand um, how how everything works and and just kind of gets better into the industry that way. Yeah, because like a motor, like anything goes wrong with that, you can at least pop the cowling, check the right. oil. No, like you can at least pretend like you know what's going on. <laughs> Being like, a mechanic, yeah. Like a battery, you open up the back and you just look at it, maybe poke it a little bit, wiggle some of the, the wires, yeah. wiggle some of the wires that connect to it. Yeah. And, and that's about where it where it stops. Right. So, uh, so just to kind of preview what we're going to get into today. So I... I got the new cat and I've, I've talked about that on the show, the, the bass cat, uh, cougar, uh, cougar. Cause I've had a Puma and a Lynx and then a Puma before that cougar, cougar okay. this year, which I like the layout. It's a, yeah. it's a cool layout. Right, it's right. like same boat. I runs, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. It's yeah. The exact same layout. Um, and I think Ike has like 15 lithium batteries in it. He's got a setup for sure. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> if you see him on the, on the trail this year, ask him, Ask yeah. him to check that thing out. It's yeah. pretty impressive. Um, but, you know, I've called you a number of different times and I've asked you like, hey, if I'm bothering you and you're like, no, dude, that's my job. You're like, and yeah. also there's a bunch of other guys that call that have the same questions. Right. So I kind of want to run through what my setup is. And then I have like eight or nine different questions here with my new lithium. So I'm running. We'll get into that later. But I'm running two AGMs. Right. And two 36 volt lithiums. Yep. 
But when I called you, you gave me like five different setup options. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I don't know. Like, just right. pick one for me. Yeah. So you had a couple of different ideas. And you're talking about redundancy and sharing power and bat and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to get into that today. Yeah, no, no, that'll be awesome. It's lithium has opened up a world where, you know, you've got multi-voltage batteries. You've got 24 volt, 36 volt, 48 volt. Um, and so with that, you have almost unlimited options, especially you're running a powerful charge. So yeah. that charge can charge 12 volt, 24 volt or 36. Uh, so you really had the gamut of any options you want. And we saw with Ike's boat, you can fit six batteries back there. So you really have whatever you want to run, you could run in that basket. I mean, the deal is, though, if he has to get underneath those batteries to get to anything else. Oh, they're light. You just pop them out wow. and then pop the tray out. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm all about, I just want it to look. I just want to be like, look, see, we're one, two, three, <laughs> four, done. Right. Uh, before we get into the batteries, a couple of big uh, announcements on BTL that developed over the week. And I think I might have mentioned this one time on the show a couple of weeks ago because I had a couple of people reach out. But uh, I talked about I'm doing uh, I'm doing the St. Jude Bass Classic the first weekend in May again with Adam Bartuzek up on uh, in Wabasha, Minnesota on the Mississippi River, which yeah. is really dynamic fishery, really cool. And right. if you need to learn how to fish current, that's probably the joint to go to. But uh, one of the things that comes along with that is raising money for St. Jude. We did a t-shirt last year, BTL fans and listeners really showed out bought the t-shirts all the proceeds went to saint jude we actually had an anonymous donor last year we had like i think like three thousand dollars just in t-shirt sales right and then randomly we check in and some dude matched it or chick i don't we don't know who it was right. but That's it awesome. like totally made the whole campaign because barty yeah. calls he's like have you seen the campaign he's like someone matched it yeah That's so awesome, thank you man. if you get whoever that was if you're listening hey, it was probably jeffrey's Probably <laughs> not highly doubtful on that. <laughs> highly doubtful on that. But anyway, uh, so we're doing that again in May. We're looking for ways to, to do kind of some creative, uh, some creative fundraising for that. Well, Adam Bartuzek uh, has the YouTube series, The Crappie Chronicles. I think I mentioned it to you before. Yeah. It's the hottest ice fishing crappie series going. He started out trying to catch the biggest crappie in the metro. Even if you're not into ice fishing, really cool. He does it with uh, with uh, Ryan Picala, Matt Waldron. Uh, and, and, uh, Adam Griffin or Griffith, Griffith, Griffin. I probably should know. We, I, everyone just calls him Griff. Right. Just you ever have, Griff. you ever have those people that you're not exact? Cause I, I get that a ton yeah. with Panger. Everyone Panger. calls me Panger. So then people call me Matt Panger. Right. But they don't know that the last name is Panger. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but they have their own beer called the break your PB beer. And then Adam's like, nothing's going on in February. And a lot of these people for the St. Jude tournament raise money with like beer crawls and stuff, which I find is ironic to raise money for like kids by doing an over 21 event. But right. anyway, that's what's <laughs> happening. So February 11th, I got to pull this up. Uh, February 11th, I will be in Minnesota for 24 hours. And Bart has organized a meetup with like, thousands of dollars of prizes that's awesome they're giving away like he's giving away like an ice house i'm gonna have a giant uh a giant afco pack denali rods we're working on maybe getting a gift certificate yeah for some so, amount for pro guide yeah, some pro guide batteries. did you did we agree to that oh we're gonna do it okay we just gotta figure out what the amount's gonna be now yeah. you're now you're stuck in it yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for 15 dollars. <laughs> for 15 dollars. but then you, you can also add tray. the btl code on top of that you could. That, that's the good thing with a with a um, basically a gift certificate to the website is you're able to use the BTL code to save some money again, uh, and it's all going to a good cause, which is great for us. Yeah, uh, and we'll get into your cause too later. But yeah. it is at and it's at so it's spelled G I E S E N B R A U. So I had to phonetically spell it out. Giesenbroy. Giesenbroy Beer Company in New Prague, Minnesota, on. February 11th. That's a Saturday night from 5 to 10 p.m. I'm going to have BTL merch in, some stickers. We're going to have a raffle to give away. 
Uh, I think we're going to do like a $10 entry to get a raffle ticket and then you can buy raffles for pot. We'll be there hanging out, drinking beer. Uh, All the guys from the Crappie Chronicles, me up there. We got a lot of BTL listeners up north and apparently there's not much to do in the winter. Yeah, February doesn't seem like there's much to do up there. So uh, stay tuned. Like I said, I'm working on getting the BTL social media stuff dialed in for this year. But uh, over on the Crappie Chronicles, my Instagram, all that, the details will be out there. But February 11th. Yeah, no, sounds like an awesome event. And it will. And they have their own beer. Like, how cool is that? It's called Break Your PB. And I guess they sold out of it the very first time they had it. Uh, And then anyone break their PB. So Frank Scalish is also coming in for the 100th show tomorrow. That's awesome. And he is. We're in a blizzard right now. Right. Yeah. It's the most snow. (laughs) Well, you were up in. Were you in Arkansas before this? No, Missouri. So I was in. Well, I was in Columbia, Missouri. Before okay, I moved they get down. way more snow than here. We did, but like it's crazy because it's completely different snow. Like you don't get the ice first, and then the snow on top. It was just straight snow, so uh, driving in it wasn't an issue. Whereas here, it's like we get rain that freezes to ice, and then there's a little snow on top of it, and there's cars in the ditch everywhere because no one knows how to drive in it. Uh, so completely different, even though there's a lot less snow. Right. Uh, but we've got like what six eight inches right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Frank was like, I was like, hey dude, there's like a snowstorm, and he was like, I'm from Ohio and I drive a truck. <laughs> yeah, he'll I be was fine. like, so you're. He's like, yeah, I'm already in Springfield, Missouri last night. Really? So he is on his way. So probably he should be arriving sometime around the time we end the show. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're going to do some stuff tonight. We got our hundred show tomorrow, the giveaway, the color number seven drops. Frank has some other giveaways show with a lot of callers from the past hundred shows. Uh, we're going to try to get Jeffries in from school. Nice. Which will be interesting because yeah. he'll be like in class. I think. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, I can jump yeah, on, can jump on. No worries. Uh, so that's, that's what's, that's what's going on uh, with Frank tomorrow. But cool. first in studio guests, thanks for driving down. Roads yeah, weren't that absolutely. bad or anything. No, no, especially like that Tulsa area. I actually saw this morning on the news. There's like a little donut hole where Tulsa pretty much got zero snow, and so I didn't see even even any snow on the side of the road until I got almost here. But then you get here and there's snow everywhere. So I got you. Are you ready to jump into this? Yeah, stuff? absolutely. So this is part two of uh, Mad Ass Basic Questions about uh, lithium or regular batteries whatnot and yeah. then i also have the uh, instant feedback pulled up i've already seen some questions about batteries on there if you have a question this is a judgment free zone okay. so if yeah. if you have a question about batteries regardless of how simple or whatever it is you are the product manager for pro guide batteries yes yes i'm here for answering any yeah. questions but but i also like the fact that you don't know everything that's true like I, you're not afraid to be like you know that's no. a good question i gotta look into that right exactly I was no, listening I to something the other day. It was like someone who has an answer for everything is someone you need to watch out for. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I, here's the thing. I don't have the answer for everything, but I definitely can get the answer for anything um, through through engineers or different people like that. So uh, I do know a lot. I know a lot of common questions because it's my day in and day out job. But yeah, if I don't know something, uh, we'll get with the engineers and get back to you. So last time we went through like lead acid agms batteries that you have to put the water in what the glass mat is how the basic batteries work and we touched on lithiums Mm -hmm. but we didn't really dive into it and now i have kind of a vested interest in it because the cat that's sitting in the garage has two lithiums in it now if it was up to you it would have four lithiums or three uh i'd say four for your setup just if it was up to matt it would have four yeah but that's where I have the question. So we'll get right into it. Let's talk yeah. about what I have in my boat right now okay. to help me understand it. Yeah. So in your boat, we've got two 31 AGMs paralleled for your starting side. Um, and it's running your electronics. It's running everything. You've got the power harness. Um, so you've got clean energy to those. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, there's this, you know, higher voltage does help units 100%. Um, but clean power to those units helps the most right so if you've got bad wiring but you've got a higher voltage battery you know it kind of pushes through and gets you the same voltage as if you had a good 12 volt with good wiring so um you got clean power there on that side and then you've got 236s in parallel on your trolling side and that's for some redundancy which i know is a term you want to get into uh but having the power pole charge definitely helps that because uh it can share energy back and forth if you need to uh, and once again, it can charge, you know, you get into any kind of situation, you can charge with that powerful charge. Okay. Can we start over with the first sentence? It was first sentence. All right. So you said I have two AGMs. Yes. That's behind my driver's side. Yes. 
you said that they're paralleled. Yes. Like I said, we're gonna. Okay. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to you. understand by the time we're done with this, we might lose all of our viewers, but I'm yeah, going to understand that's that's what, how my batteries are set up. No, so, so, so what is that? And and we'll take it one step at a time. I'm literally doing a diagram no, here, I so like it. I'm going to put it in my boat so I know yeah, what is how going your on. setup. So, is. so so the two AGMs, mm -hmm. they are. We don't even know what they're what they're used for at this point. You mentioned it, but we'll go into that. Right. They're paralleled. What is yeah. paralleled mean? So basically, when you parallel battery, that's when you, you run a jumper wire, positive to positive, negative to negative. And now instead of two 31 AGMs, you essentially have one big battery. Okay. So a battery, the basics of it, you'll hear me say it every time, it's just a fuel tank. And, it, and it's only so big and you can only go so far on that amount of fuel. So in order to make sure that you're not going to have any issues on the water, we doubled your fuel or we doubled your battery capacity by putting two together, but it still runs as one battery. So it's like having the dual tank back there. You can run, your basket, yeah. you technically could run just the left, you can run just the right, or you can hit it and you can run both. Where it's, Te yeah, it's but how yours is wired, it's, it's all going to run at one time. So it's going to evenly, evenly discharge together. Okay. And that just allows... And having two instead of just one allows for more the the power to be drawn evenly from each battery at the same time. So instead of just having one that you're drawing down, it's it's basically acting as one. It's still acting as one battery, but it, you've just doubled your capacity. So say you had a 20 gallon fuel tank, now you've got a 40 gallon fuel tank. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, why? And this is from talking to old school guys that are like, you need uh, AGMs for for your starting starting yeah. battery this is old school mm -hmm. like i said i'm just a convert to this why do the old school guys say agms for that for that application now it just um it comes down a lot to when it when the technology first came out it wasn't fantastic for the starting side and so there's always been a little bit of shyness away from it uh, and even the engine manufacturers until recently, Mercury, you know, they never said it would void your warranty. They said it could void your warranty. Uh, and then they finally came out with some parameters. Hey, if you're if your BMS, which is the brain of a lithium, we can get into that. Um, but if it has these parameters, then you're good to go. Uh, it's Mercury. It's not they're not going to certify it, but it meets spec. OK. And so as long as it meets spec, you're good to go. And, you know, AGM is nice because it's going to give you power no matter what. It stands for what glass mat? Absorb glass. Absorb mat. glass. So it's like mat. fiberglass between the plates, between yep. the lead plates, okay. uh, and that's what holds the electrolyte or some people call it like water in a, in a lead acid. Uh, instead of having it liquid that moves around, it's absorbed in those plates, uh, and that helps with stability. That, yeah, well, heat and cold, vibration resistance. Okay. Uh, no maintenance, you know, because it's all just confined into that one battery. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. And so, what exactly are those two? Pro Guide AGMs powering. So they're powering your live well pumps, your your digital dashboard, your electronics, your engine, your power poles. Um, basically anything on that boat that's a 12 volt accessory, you know, bilge pumps. Everything is on those two batteries. And crank like start like starts. starts yeah, starts the, the engine. Yep. Which yep. is the primary. Primary purpose. Yes. And because they're paralleled. Mm -hmm. And because they're 30, they're what, 36 is 30, 31 AG 31. Yeah. That's just the group sizing. Okay. Group sizing. Mm -hmm. I have power to be able to have all of my electronics running, mm -hmm. have full power to my electronics with the, with the, uh, bass tank power harness that I have running. So that goes directly to those batteries. And then right. I have that cable it goes up to all my electronics. And then it also is my start. Yep. That's all those batteries do. That's what those batteries are there for. Um, and like I said, when we put those two together, so technically you could run all that on one battery, right? It's right. just a 12 volt battery, but then, you know, you may only get five hours out of it. Okay. So now we've doubled everything for, you know, that's theoretic. You're going to get more than 10 yeah, hours, but I got it. And listen, I know that there's a, I mean, there's a plethora of questions that are scrolling down the side here, but I want to get this full thought through and then we'll yeah. go back and we'll start cherry picking. Absolutely. Does that work for yeah, you? I'm good with it. Is this too basic? No, no. I've never the, done this. And listen, I've always like I said, to do this, this is the most, this is the biggest issue. And people, you know, there's no dumb question when it comes to batteries. Okay. Cause this is a know. deal where I would say, Hey man, I need to talk to you for half an hour. 
Right. You're like, hey, okay, I'll set aside. And you'll be like, what is this about? And I'm like, all right, I need to diagram out what yeah. the hell all this does. <laughs> no, no. And I, you know, this is what I do day to day. Okay. So let's do one more thing. So okay. there's a bunch of connections off of those AGM batteries. Right. So I've got, I've got one connection that's going to go up to my electronics. Mm -hmm. That's going to run my uh, active target, my forward facing sonar, my HDS 12. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to run uh, any time that I turn the power on. And right. that's at the dash or the console. Right. When I turn my bilge on, when I fill my live wells up, when I put my lights in, all that stuff, that's what that's all connected to. Yep. Everything's connected to that battery. Uh, the way your boat's set up probably has a Perco switch or something. Yep. So you don't have all those leads going directly to the battery. Uh, they go to that switch. But yeah, you've, you've got a, a jump wire going to the okay. switch. So if you understand where it's going to and something doesn't work, then you can trace it back to just make sure. Because you, your biggest yeah. pet peeve, which I find hilarious, is and it, it is true. Battery gets blamed for everything. Oh, 100%. And there's a ton of other stuff that can go on. Yeah. But I, I need to be one of those guys when something, and I've learned that with this stuff, like right. the studio setup mm -hmm. for Mark, like, okay, I've got some issues. So I've spent all this hours trying to trace this back. I need to be able to do that in the boat. So if my lights don't work, is it my light? Is it the wiring to, if something's happy with the grass, I need to be able to, so now I know what everything is back there. Right. So that takes care of the pro guide, the two pro guide AGMs yep. that are directly behind the driver's seat that I right. have. Yep. Are we ready to move over to the yeah to the latest and greatest? Yeah. So on your other side, you've got two thirty sixes in parallel, um, and again, that is more so for redundancy. So I'm just going to get into the word uh, redundancy. Is Hit basically um, you're going to have multiple options uh, in case of a failure potentially. So if I've got two thirty sixes in parallel. And for some reason, one battery fails out. I've got that other one right there that I can connect to. Now, you know, Ike's situation where he's running, you know, six batteries. It's all about redundancy where if he has any issues on the water, he can flip a switch. He can, you know, wire to the other battery, whatever, and and continue with this day without having to get off the water, without having to go see anybody. And so, you know, redundancy in a bass boat, if you're a tournament angler, and you can't afford to have any time not on the water, that it is imperative to have that. It's like having an extra prop. Exactly. Yeah. You it's carry like extra having props. more than one flipping rod and reel in case you blow it up yeah. or it breaks. It's yeah. like having more than one one lure in your boat in case you break it off. Right. Yeah. Same exact. exact. Exact same thought process. Now, what that's doing, though, you've got two of them in parallel. So, again, you're doubling your fuel tank. Parallel. Why are the exact same that the, yeah, what, positive that the positive, AGM are? Negative to negative, just like the AGM. Okay. And now your trolling motor has twice the amount of power it can run off of. Now we've got, you know, especially with the power pole charge, I've got guys, you know, that went out to OHIV and went out to these places chasing 10 pounders, trolling motor on 10 all day um, and running on 150 amp hour. And it's fine. What does that mean? So, so each of those 36 volts is 50 amp hours. Okay. So that's. And there's how many of them? You've got two. So you've got a hundred amp hours back there. Okay. Okay. So that, that's kind of standard. A lot of pros will run three 12 volt 100s uh, or two 36 we'll into that. After but we I'm get just saying, this. so it's 100 amp hours combined. Okay. But it's overkill. No one needs 100 amp hours. We do it just because we want to have the security of, hey, I can go a 14 hour practice day, you know, throwing a looking for beds yeah. at on high bypass and not have to put a generator like Rojas used to do back right. in the day yeah. when he was spot, you know, he had the Yamaha deal back right. in the day. He yeah. would have a generator. Yeah. And he would have a generator in his boat during bed tournament so he could go on high bypass for 16 hours. Yeah. Yeah. No, however, and that's long exactly why I mean, in a, in a big industry for us that has been a huge help in the testing and the development of this is the bow fishing industry. Because those guys are running, I mean, they're on 10 all day yeah. and going 14, 16 miles at a time um, on just their trolling motor. So it, it's been huge in our success of developing that. Okay. So I've got two. 36 volt pro guide lithiums mm -hmm. on the right hand side on the port, pass, side. port side of the boat yeah. starboard side we've already covered yep port side of the boat what is that model number that i have like what is the actual so bag? it's a, a pgl which stands for pro guide lithium 36 vm 50 so 36 volt M stands for marine, 50 is the amp hour. So the nomenclature looks confusing until you know what, what each thing means, and then it's really simple. Okay. Say that one more time. I'm trying to pull it yeah. up here. So PGL 36 VM 50. So 36 volt marine, 50 amp hour. 36 volt 
VM50. Yeah. All right. Is this it? Let's see here. Yeah, that's got to be it. There it is. Right there. 36 VM50. That's a $1,299.99 back. Yes, sir. But it's replacing three. So you got you to gotta consider that. Um, now, that one battery, in a, and ours is a true group 31 footprint, not any taller, not any wider. So it'll fit okay. in a standard tray. You have to understand, anytime you say a sentence, okay, okay. it leads to more ex explanation. I got you. I got you. So, thir so there's, there's common battery sizes. The three most common in Marine are 24, 27, and 31. And all that is is a footprint. It's just the How size of the are. box. The yep. tray they fit in. The size of the box, yep. And so almost every boat will come from the factory with 31 trays. Okay. Okay, so because that's the largest. So you could put a 27 and a 31 tray if you strap it down tight enough and everything's fine. Um, but so it's a 31 footprint, but it's replacing three of your batteries in one in one box. Okay, so how much are those three that they're replacing? Then? So for instance, so since it's a 50 amp hour, our 12 volt 50 amp hour runs for five ninety nine. So it'd be eighteen hundred dollars to buy three 12 volts, or twelve ninety nine to buy one 36 volt, same capacity. Okay, so even though you're getting one, and you're saying this battery, and it's a, it's like that lithiums across the board mm -hmm. are way more expensive. But what you're getting in that battery is the equivalent of more value if you were to put that much power, that much battery in a different type. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's a much easier way to look at it than yeah. just being like, hey, I just spent three grand on batteries. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and into all of this, into lithium in general, comes the longevity, right? So you're going to have longer power for each cycle, which is each charge and discharge, but you're also going to have a much longer cycle life. So say... Best AGM you've ever ran. So say say R31 AGM, you're going to get... That's what I ran last year. 31 AGMs like you ran last year. You've ran loved them. them. Yeah, loved them. You're going to get 400 cycles out of it about. And that's only running it down to about 80% discharge. Okay, so if you completely kill them every day, it's going to be even less than 400 charges and discharges. So a cycle is basically a day of fishing. Okay. So you'll have 400 days of fishing on your best AGMs ever. So that's why some guys replace their batteries every two years or every oh, yeah. year. And other guys are like, well, I've had my battery for five years. All it's depends on how you use them. Much. Yep. Yep. And, but so a lithium, we, the least amount where you're going to get greater than 2,500 cycles. So you're going to have 2,500 fishing trips. Um, you know, last time I was on here, I talked about that a little bit and I saw some, some funny comments about the math of it, but it's like, truthfully, uh, you're going to get at least five times the life out of it. So if you divide the price of it by five, that's what you'd be paying for an AGM. Okay, so this makes sense. So this uh, app that we're not allowed to talk about. Right. It's not fully. Yeah. But that's really cool. It's really awesome. It yeah. has it has cycles on it. Can yeah. I talk about this or do we need Absolutely, to know? Absolutely. No, we can okay, talk. So, so it's, but I it's didn't on know the what Play that Store meant. and in the app. Can I tell how many cycles it says it has on yeah. there? It says it has 800 cycles. Okay. And mine says three. Right. Right now. Yeah. And I was like. I, that's cool. It appears that I have a lot of cycles, but I'm not exactly sure. Right. Like how? What am I trying to get yeah, up no, to it? So, but so but that, what yeah. that's showing is how many before you kind of have to start paying attention to. Right. Okay. And, and and that number will grow on the app. It's just the algorithm is basically just giving you a phantom number of 800 to fill it up, and then it'll grow from there. I got you. Yeah. But uh, and and that helps. That helps you. That helps us as the as the manufacturer as well to kind of you know if you have a battery issue potentially. Uh, I can say, hey, pull up your app, see what it says, see this, whatever. Um, and you know, we, we ran into we ran into this um, with some wiring issues we actually had. So you know, batteries got installed. A uh, customer calls me and says, hey, this thing's lasting four hours and I'm dead. And I'm like, well, you know, how how is that going to happen? So we were actually able to pull up the app, look at the current draw coming out of it. So the app is really cool. Um, in the app store, it's called Pro Guide Power, all one word. Um, and if you've got the 36 volt, the 24 volt, or any of the smaller batteries, like the small 50, the 24 amp hour, the nine amp hour, all of those connect to that app. Um, and what that, what that allows is now you can instantly say I'm out on the water or, or the, the 150. we've got 150 amp hour, 12 volt that, that all of our bow fishing and catfishing guys are running. And so they can literally go out there, go in the river, put their trolling motor on spot lock, pull up the app and see how much draw is coming out of it. And they could calculate if they wanted to, how long they could sit there at that pace, not have to move, um, not have to charge anything like that. Okay. 
Uh, let's get, we got a little bit, we got a little bit off track. Let's get back on it. So my two lithiums are what, what their job is. Yeah. So their job is solely to run your trolling motor. Trolling motor. So they're a 30. So that's the thing. They're a 36 volt battery. So you can't run anything else off of it. It's only why can't you run it because it would be too much voltage to to any other fry everything. Any other accessory on your boat? What would happen if I just perhaps you could melt wires? Let's hook this sucker up and just let her fly. Burn ECUs, you know, just too much power. Too much power to it. Yeah. The only thing that on your boat that you could run, uh, well, not on your boat. If you had a Garmin, um, the black box can run on thirty six volt, or their salt water, um, like the eighty six hundred units, can technically run on thirty six volt. Or no, 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 no. My bad. I misspoke on 24 volt, 24, 24 volt. Yes. Not 36. Uh, Say can, that again. So yeah, 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 yeah. So the black box and the 8,600 units can run on 24 volt. So that's why you'll see some of these guys running higher voltage batteries because it's a cleaner picture just because, uh, again, anytime you give any kind of processor more power, it's going to run more efficient. Okay. Yeah. Not 36 volt. But please. why <laughs> doesn't it jack up the trolling motor cables and blow it up and fry it and everything because it's, it's made bigger and thicker it's, yeah it's made for 36 volts so especially so the like wiring you, is yeah the, well every, everything, everything so so here's the thing you're not going to when i say melt wires the reason it would melt the wire is if it's going to a 12 volt accessory that can't handle that amount of voltage the accessory itself will get hot and the wires will start to deteriorate um the wiring technically can handle all that voltage but your trolling motor wires are a thicker gauge wire they're going to a unit that's expecting, you know, and genuinely a, a fully charged, you're going to be around 42 volts. So like uh, it's expecting that higher voltage and and it can run on it. Whereas again, say you hooked up your HGS 12 to it, mm-hmm. it's not going to be good. Okay. So that's why I can't like, let's say something happens to my AGMs. Mm-hmm. That's why I can't jump off of my lithium correct so because if you were to connect it with jumper cables you're now putting 36 now volts i'm gonna into fry, a 12 volt dude battery. i freaking get it now yeah, yeah so then that's why they were saying people who don't run lithiums you're like well if something happens to your cranking battery you can just always jump off of your trolling motor exactly. batteries so now what i'm saying is i cannot jump off of my trolling motor batteries because i would fry my whole system exactly don't, but you can do it through your charge that's the nice the charge has emergency jump we haven't so, gotten there yet yeah but i'm just saying i'm just but talking yeah, about so in, straight in a normal cables. world where you're like which has happened right i mean that happened at the bfl regional on texoma right a long time ago in my Skeeter ZX 190 and I had an old man and he's I was like, we're screwed. And yeah. he's like, young man, you got jumpers. And I was like, yeah. And he was, he freaking hooked it up for and I started. It. Yeah. Can't do that now. It'd be like, you know, right. You don't want to do that on your setup. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, if people don't know that people have had to have totally jacked their stuff up doing that. I'm sure. And, and here's the thing. It's not going to be like some kind of catastrophic explosion, but it will ruin yeah. the battery. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. But- All right. 33 minutes in, it's already worth your while for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to get to some of these questions. We're going to go back and talk about some of the questions that arose on some of the stuff that you said on this. But that gives okay. me a clear path as to what it's doing, why it's doing it, and why why it's with what. Makes sense? Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, BTL on a Wednesday, a snowy Wednesday in Oklahoma. Matt Looney, you recently moved to yeah, Oklahoma. So living up in Adair, uh, about 10 minutes from the dam on Grand. So, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's terrible. No. <laughs> and how it's old is awesome. your little girl? Uh, she's seven months now. God, seven time months. flies. I remember when you were about that. I mean, it's just she, at seven, they have like a personality and stuff. Now, oh, right? my goodness. Yeah, she's already throwing fits. She gets What's mad. Myla. How do you spell that? M Y L A. Myla. I've never heard that. That's cool. That's what we never heard it either. So we're like, let's do it. Yeah. It, I don't know what it means. It's How'd just, you come up with that? So, Michelle is Michelle, and I'm Matt, and we wanted another M. Oh, so you're all ML. Yeah, we're all ML. So on her mom's side, they're Jack, Jody, Janice, Jew, like, I mean, all J's. So we're like, oh, let's go all M's. But there you go. All right. ML, Matt Looney in studio talking batteries 2023. It is January 25th. We will be back right after these messages. Introducing HDS Pro. Watch fish reacting to your lure live with Active Target 2. Get game-changing clarity in the megahertz range with the new Active Imaging HD Sonar. 
Find the richest fishing spots with Seamaps charts. Take full control of your boat with the ultimate fishing system. HDS Pro. The more you see, the more you catch. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from BassCat. Feel the rush. Everything you need. One legendary brand. Top on all. Strike King. Hey guys, Gerald Swindle representing the AFCO Hydronaut. This is the jacket I love wearing when times is tough. And I'm talking about the weather, not the fishing. The jacket, what I like, I got a double cup right here. I can seal up the bottom of my jacket because when you're fishing, you're holding your arms up. You're bad about getting water that runs downhill. Everything bends good. I'm long arm. Look, it fits very comfortable. My arms are flexible. I've got the speed hood on, pouring down rain. I can get everything zipped up. One thing they did is they made plenty of pocket space. If you ain't got enough pockets in a Hydronaut rain suit, you just got too much stuff from the water man brain that's 30k baby 30 times the reason you ain't gonna get wet super warm if it's cold in the winter time you put on your hydronaut you're gonna be a much more comfortable person if you want to just look sexy at dairy queen where your hydronaut we got it from small to 5x most rain gear does not come in that many sizes you got waist adjusting straps we can make it fit you no matter what the environment is we want you to be comfortable we want you to be dry you gotta check it out they ain't gonna let you down I'm the kind of guy that never leaves the house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Preparation is key to success, and that preparation starts well before you ever hit the water. You're only as strong as your connection to the fish, and your line is that critical connection. Confidence in your line every minute of every day on the water is a necessity, and failure, it's not an option. Sunline makes the fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines to give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. All right, welcome back. BTL on a Wednesday. And the lithium battery talk got me all heated up there, so I had to drop the vest. Take the jacket off. Back with Matt Looney, the, uh, I'm not good with titles, product manager yeah. for Pro Guide Batteries. Thanks for explaining that. that. That makes so much more sense to me now. That's awesome. All right, I wanted to get into... Uh, the charging deal because i got a power pole charge now but you were perusing the comments and i'm trying to find it there was one comment yeah. that you said was the that you though there were a couple comments that were on there but what was the one that you wanted to yeah, address so, right off the hopper so there was a great comment asking about why you would need lower amp hours was and, it further up or was it yeah yeah it was about halfway see it was a bunch of letters and numbers CJR, I think. That please uh CJR4497 says, yeah. please explain the need for a lower amp hour rating on lithium over AGM and what amp hour rating is needed for all day summertime use for trolling motor. Yeah. So um, you know, battery ratings are kind of interesting because some companies can can schedule it off of a different pool, different draw. Uh, but in general, say like a, a hundred amp hour AGM is not equivalent to 100 amp hour lithium and it's all about the power curve so as you're using an agm battery or a lead acid battery there's a, a pretty steep drop off once you get to a certain capacity to where the voltage goes down whereas on a lithium similar to like your drill batteries or things like that you know everyone says they're full power till they're dead right okay so since you have the higher voltage longer you're actually going to be able to run a longer time because the voltage isn't dropping. So 
typically lithium's at least 30% more efficient, in some cases 50% more efficient. Uh, but I like to say 30 just for, you know, good measure. So like a, a 100 amp hour lithium would be more equivalent to 130 amp hour AGM, if that makes sense, because you're 30% more efficient. Um, so a guy that's running, say for you, you ran 31 AGMs, you know, for the past couple of years, yeah. you could run 75 amp hour lithiums, even though your AGMs are 110 amp hour, you could run 75 amp hour lithiums and get the same performance. Okay. So that that's, that's a great question he's asking, but it all has to do with the power, the power curve. So again, as it's discharging on an AGM or lead acid, you're going to go down, down, down with the voltage, whereas the lithium is going to stay pretty flat. I mean, it's going to go down, of course, but it's not going to drop. Uh, until it's until it's dead and then it's going to drop off completely is that kind of the same as what nick's asking here why when you go up in volts is it okay to go down in amp hours that has to do with watt hour ratings so uh, <laughs> we're getting we're getting <laughs> into, I not have, yeah. is that the one where you said this guy's getting into the weeds no yeah no but it, so do we it is a little bit of weeds, but basically, um, for the smart ones in the group, just go ahead and explain we'll just say this. A 30, just yeah, yeah, yeah. On this so a 36 volt 50 amp hour is the same watt hours, which is like the, the true power rating as a 12 volt 150. So since you tripled your voltage, the amp hour rating is cut in a third and it's the same amount of power. So, you know, it's half six and one half dozen in the other. So basically if I have a 12 volt 150 amp hours, I'll have the same watt hours as a 36 volt 50 amp hour because I've tripled the voltage. So I divide the amp hours by three and it's the same watt hours. So um, you're going to get the, it's all, and that's probably a solar question or an RV question. Cause I, okay. I get those a lot on that aspect of it. Um, but that, that's the reason like, you know, you could run three one fifties or you could run three 36 volt fifties and you'd have the same watt hours. It's all about how you want to charge it. Okay. Uh, again that's solar that's rv probably like so what i'm trying to do with this show is i'm trying to get it for someone like me that wants to know it that it's somewhat linear the show is not just like random questions which is right. why i'm trying to kind of go piece by piece on this because yeah. if it was just random questions i would get lost in the show and it'd be here all day so the next thing that i wanted to do and then we can go back and we can do a whole yeah, random yeah. question set yeah we'll do random questions um but i thought those kind of had to do with what we were talking about no nope. you were talking about before so now let's go to the 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 charging system um, I've always ran the Minn Kota four bank, whatever charging system that it came with. This is the first time that I've had the power pole charge. I know that that is now used by the vast majority of touring pros and serious right. anglers. And it seems like it's incredibly reliable. And, you know, the first, it, I remember like it came out, Chris Lane was talking about it and then it like went away for a year or two or something. And I'm like, what is C months? Like right. I had no clue what it was, how it worked. And then it came back and they had it right. Yeah. Fair assessment. Fair assessment. Yes. Okay. W what is the power pole charge? How does it work and why is it the best option for my boat and it seems like for every boat? Now? Yeah. So, so what it does is it's, it's a charger, right? Okay. It's the basic form of it, but it also, uh, it's also a charge on the run. So you may have heard of those from back to people who have like stealth charge on the runs and like all these things. Uh, so basically as you're running your engine, it's putting voltage back into the battery, not just off the alternator. So in the app, you can say, Hey, I wanted to charge my trolling. So say you're Jason Christie on the Sabine and you're running whatever, and you didn't get a good charge that night. Yeah. You could charge your trolling batteries that whole run up there. Because, because the, the charger charge, is connected to the motor, which is generating. What's connected to the starting battery. Wait, that charge i, I got to figure this out yeah, yeah, yeah. the charger my power pole charge yes is connected to my starting battery yep what's my or is the minkota and all that connected to the starting battery too yeah but it's so it's a single lead so on a minkota you're you're just charging the starting battery so on a okay. power pole charge you've got two leads two one goes to your starter okay and one goes to the trolling so whether you're running three 12 volts 24 volt 36 volt there's only one lead and it charges positive of battery one negative of the final battery. So if it's three batteries, it'd be battery one and battery three. Okay. So it's charging them as a series, right? So what that does, as you're running down the lake, your alternator's putting power into the starting battery, but the charge can take that power and transfer it to the trolling batteries if need be. Or, and, and they can do it on the run like during the day. So say, say you go to a lake where you're trolling all day long, throwing a buzz bait. You don't even ever really have to start your engine because fish are right there at the ramp, right? right. So I'm on 10 all day long, throwing a buzz bait. 
I can have the app pulling power from my starting side once those batteries start to drop to where they're getting kind of critically low to where I'm able to go longer, but it's never going to, to leave you dead on the water is the cool thing with the charge. So it'll never pull too much power from your starting battery that you can't start your engine to okay. go to the next place. So it pulls. It can, it can share voltage back and forth. Okay. So it can charge both your starting battery and your trolling motor battery. Yes. Yeah, so, if, so there's, there's a dial. So it can be, you can go all starting, you can go middle or you can go all trolling. Okay. So why in theory, could you never charge your battery? No, no. <laughs> so, like, how does that eventually work? Yeah, then? I mean, you know I what guess, I'm saying. I guess technically, if you just left your engine running all the time, you could, you can. But like, let's say I want to go up to. I'm not saying you're recommending this, but right. this is what I haven't been able to wrap around my head. Like, if you're constantly charging, I guess. Oh, I guess it has to have something coming in. So either your alternator providing power or a plug-in providing power. Okay, but if you're running your engine, you're bringing power. In. Right. So they're alternating. So as running. long as you're so technically you should be able to yeah. I mean it's probably not recommended to never charge it. I mean, if you could run your engine 24/7 without stopping, you yeah. could theoretically never have to plug in. I got it. But that's what's allowing guys like you were talking about at OHIV with the combination right. of the, Going the lithium 12 hour days ran in yep. con, con, uh, concurrence what's the word there? conjunction no what are they when it's called when they're linked to parallel 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 okay so you take the parallel you take a battery that's equivalent of three or four agms right so you've got paralleled with more power you're actually bringing power in so that's what's allowing yeah power to never be an issue right so that's the thing like i said so for instance um the guy one of the guys i'm talking about Tyler Anderson. Yeah. Uh, Tyler's he's running, real fishing. Yeah. Tyler's real fishing on YouTube. He's running his entire boat on two batteries, one starting lithium, one 36 volt trolling with a power pull charge. And he's had, you know, 12, 14 hour days, no issues. And that's because, you know, when he's out trolling for a long period of time, his charge can transfer power over. And when he starts his motor back up, you know, then it's going to charge up the starting battery again. And again, he can charge the trolling side. But basically that charge allows you to go longer with whatever batteries you have, whether it's lead acid, AGM or lithium, it's going to let you go longer because it's sharing that power. So I remember covering the, you know, I would room with a lot of guys on tour while I covered the events for Bass Zone. Okay. The guys with uh, lead acids, AGM, plug the battery in mm -hmm. as soon as they get back. Right. Don't worry about it. I remember back in the day, it was always a fiasco for the guys who had these new lithiums as far as you got to plug this in for this. And then there's a completely separate charger for the lithiums because this charger doesn't work with the lithiums and it's on an independent thing. And they had to check and I was like, screw that. Right. Now I just plug mine in like normal. Mm -hmm. You don't need a separate with the power pole charge. You don't need a separate, but if you are in a Skeeter ZX 190 or a little, uh, a little uh, saber or something like that. Right. And you want to put a lithium in there. You you still have to be very cognizant of what charger you have in there because not all chargers work with the lithiums, right? Right. So uh, for the most part, um, your your chargers on a twelve volt lithium are going to be fine. Um, it all has to. So there's charging algorithms. So so we're getting into you know a little bit of weak, but um, so like a lead acid battery, it wants to get hit hard for for a little bit with some voltage and then it's going to basically go down and trickle charge all the way up okay so it's full agm is very similar to lithium where they want consistent voltage till they're full so like a lithium it wants 14.6 volts until that sucker is completely full and then it's going to say i'm done rather than have all these charging algorithms so um that's why there's different algorithms on the chargers themselves like so say say the Minn Kota, the pc460 so you've got that gray button. I could select what type of battery is connected to it. Okay. And that's why, because there's different cycles for different things. Now, the old PC460s, you can charge an AGM mode, our lithium. So this is specifically to ProGuide because everybody has different BMS settings. So BMS. BMS is battery management system. It's the brain of the whole operation. Okay. It's the big computer chip on top. Um, but basically that allows voltage in or voltage out. And, you know, it controls over temperature, all those good things, right? And so um, the way ours are set up, if it will charge an AGM battery, it'll charge our lithium battery. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to get 100% charge out of it mm -hmm. because a fully charged AGM isn't the same voltage level as a fully charged lithium, but it's going to charge it enough where you're never going to really notice. Um, the things you can't use are like, you know, the old 
standard, you know, off board charge your car battery with it from the seventies or what you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't use anything like that. But let's say I've got a 2012 bass cat cougar. That's got still, I, you know, I've, I've had it for 15 years, right. or 12 years, whatever. Right. I want, I'm like, Hey, I, I use my troll motors a lot. I'd like to put lithiums in how do I know? Like, is there a place to go? How do I know? Like if that charger will work, if yeah, I need a so, new charger or what I need for it? Like, cause that's a lot of people out there. Yeah, no, it really is. And, and we have a document of like approved charger list, right? That you okay. can get on our website or you can always send either me a message, send the website a message. I answer all the website questions. I bet that's um, awesome. Which your BTL. Well, what's funny is <laughs> I have like, I'll have a guy message me and I'll reply back and I'll get a reply back says, Hey, great show on BTL. And it was just like, you know, okay. So he heard we me. We tried that with the bass take and they were like, dude, dude, we just would spend all day <laughs> answering questions. Right, now. Right. Like we got, they did like a dedicated one. And yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. it was like overwhelming. Well, and that, that's a whole nother. Which is good though. It's I guess that's thing. a good. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's, it's a new world. Yeah. And so people are trying to learn from people they trust rather than just, because again, you could find exactly the opposite of what I'm saying on the internet. If you wanted to. Yeah. The internet, you can find whatever opinion you have. You can find someone that agrees with it. Yeah. <laughs> so you you've got to, you know, it's flat just earth stuff. Right. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so basically um but no so you can message us about the chargers the, the Minn Kota chargers work great we sell the no co charger power pole charge works great um yeah dual pro has a lithium charger now uh, but here's the thing you do got to watch out for a 24 volt or 36 volt battery does require a multi-voltage charger so because I, I had a guy called me um he put a 36 volt battery in his boat and he connected three of his 12 volt charger leads to it thinking it would charge 36 volts didn't hurt anything but no it's not going to work <laughs> like it's not a 12 volt battery okay um so if you get into multi-voltage you have to have a different charger that's why we like the powerful charge because you can do anything with it um but but that that is the one thing to watch out for any any charger i would say you know 2015 or newer it'll charge the lithiums okay uh, explain to me when you were giving me options as, as to what I could do for the boat, you gave me four or five, but the two that you seem to be pretty high on were either the two thirty six mm -hmm. the, the trolling motor mm -hmm. or three twelves. Yeah. Ex explain why. Yeah. So the, there's multiple options. We're like getting that. back into redundancy. So on my personal boat, I run two starting lithiums and three 12 volt trolling lithiums because our deep cycle lithiums can jumpstart an engine. They have, you know, the pulse amperage pull yeah. abilities and things like that. So if I get in a tournament and I, like I said, I want to have just like you, you know, we have all these flipping sticks, we have all these different baits. So if I get into a tournament and for some reason I have an issue, I want to be able to swap batteries around or say, you know, say I only have one starting battery and three 12 volt lithiums and I have a 36 volt, trolling motor i have to run three i can go to walmart and throw in a lead acid battery if one of those lithiums goes out to get through my weekend now your capacity is going to go to whatever the lead acid is so you're not going to have as much runtime but it'll work now long term no do not mix chemistries that's a that's a bad idea but for a short term like a weekend or even you know up to a week mm -hmm. it'd be fine to get through so i like having that security of knowing and so i run the Lawrence trolling motor right so i can run on 36 or 24. i have a battery go down on either side i can flip one or the other I to where you. i'm never gonna have that, never gonna have an issue that makes sense mm -hmm. uh all right well you brought up your own question then what makes a lithium battery go out uh so there's different faults so that, that's the thing on a lithium um you know there were catastrophic failures or rapid deconstructions uh was what we'll call them early on right yeah. everyone knows those stories everyone that's a lot of reasons why a lot of people are scared of lithium now uh and that was straight lithium ion uh lithium iron they weren't even designed for boats were they no a lot we, of them there were a lot no. of guys putting stuff in boats that were They're not still designed to be beaten repeatedly Correct. billions of times yes going across and sam raver and like today i mean they yeah and so, <laughs> so even today, there's still that same internal structure. A lot of them aren't aren't made for this. That's they're, a, they're pro, made that's to go one on. of the things that Pro Guy's really good. Right. At so we've got internal housings, and and it's specifically made for marine. You look at our terminals. You look at things like that. It's a marine battery. Um, but what what was the initial? 
Oh, what Initially. makes a you? You were like, hey, if I have have it go down, and it's okay, what makes them turn? What yeah. makes a so, lithium go bad? In all of this, we've developed BMSs, right? So battery management system, mm -hmm. the brain of it. Well, so if it gets too hot, it'll turn off. If it, you know, the voltage spikes too high, it'll turn off. If the voltage gets too low, it'll turn off. Um, so that there, it's very smart to prevent any of those failures they had previous. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So rather than have you know, uh, issues like, like we saw before. Now we've got a, a, a management system inside of it that's going to keep all that in regulation and get, keep it in check. That's why a lot of people do like an AGM because it'll give you power no matter, you can abuse it every single day and it's going to give you power until it's dead every single day. Whereas a lithium, it's got to have specific parameters and it's got to got to have the right application for the right battery and for it to work properly. We're like an hour into this. I feel like that was I feel like it was nothing. Yeah, I know. Um, and we could go for another two hours on it. Right. Uh, but I, I think that was good stuff, wasn't it? I think so. I mean, you're the battery guy. You tell me, was that good stuff? Yeah. No, that's great. And, and here's the thing. We would never be able to get through a show to answer all the different questions. Um, again, reach out to me. Reach out to the pro guy. You really, you really want to do that? I, I'm going to say it. I, I run that page. So all right. What's I the will email address? Answer. What's the page that they so, need to go to? So they to? go to proguidebatteries.com. Pro, go to contact us. Pro Guide Batteries, P R O G U I D B A T T R I S dot com. Yep. And go to the contact us and you can fill in your questions and I will answer every one of them as fast as I can. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we're in good shape. I'm trying to just wrap my head around it. And there's, I mean, some of the stuff I don't get where you kind of yeah. got off on it, but I have a much better <laughs> understanding of. Right. Oh, uh, one more. And then we'll take a break. Then we'll come back. We'll talk about a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Why are some lithiums 3,000, some are 1,200, some are 15? What's the deal with the massive discrepancy in, in costs on this thing? Yeah. So as in anything, there are different level cells. There's different level components. There's different level BMSs, different level factories, right? Um if you wanted to, you could start BTL batteries with a right email address and enough money and someone will let you put your their, your label on their battery and sell it, right? But you know nothing about that battery. You're just going to put your label on it. And those batteries are the cheaper ones you see on the market. Um, you know, there there's misconceptions out there about lithium is lithium or, you know, one cell is cheaper than the other type of cell. And, and it's not the case. It has to do with the quality of cell. You could find cheap cylindrical cells. You could find cheap prismatic cells, or you can find expensive on both, right? Okay. And so the components inside like a real, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you could go on Alibaba and get a, a reel for thirty bucks, or you could go buy a five hundred dollar, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and okay, it's going to be completely different. That yeah. makes hundred percent. So it's all about the components. Um, and you know, we try to price our batteries in the market to where anglers can afford it, but we're we're trying to be the best battery at our price point. Um, and you know, try to be the best battery in the market, but I'm saying, um, there's different levels of, of, of cells, different level of components that make those different in prices that a lot of people, you know, again, look at a company, uh, you could go on Amazon and, and buy $350 lithium right now, but you probably couldn't pronounce the company and you probably can't get a yeah, hold of no, them if there's I, a warranty. I get it no, no, no. I'm it's saying, why you can go why. buy a $20 set of sheets or a thousand yeah. dollar set of exactly. Egyptian cotton sheets. Exactly. Okay. And so, and so I just didn't know. ours didn't comes know down to the components used in the customer service that we have, you know, 43 years of experience doing. I like it. Yeah. That's a good question. All right. I, I lied. A couple more rapid questions uh, that might save you a couple emails. Mm -hmm. Lynn wants to know, can you boost jump start on a lithium cranking battery? Uh, depends on the charge. So on a no-co chart, on a no-co booster, you can, um, but you're literally just going to have to touch it to it to start it. You don't, you don't need to leave it connected to it. Uh, and again, I'm speaking to my battery, right? I'm not speaking yep. for other lithiums yep. on the market. Um, but yes, you you can jump start with a boost with a NoCo boost charger. All right, Adam wants to know: Can you get just a 12 volt battery for like a Bass Tracker Classic? Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, there's there's all different battery. You go on our website; we've got a full array, and we I mean, we have every every different type of battery and everything. But on the lithium side, I mean, you can go from a nine amp hour up to 150 amp hour on the 12 volt. Or you can go multi-voltage. All right. Ryan says, if my charger says, quote, works with lithium, is that enough to trust that the charger won't fry my new lithiums? Yeah, I would say so. Because again. But didn't uh, you say, wouldn't you rather have him look at the 
what exact charger he has and then go yeah, see if yeah, it's comparable no. on the website. The best thing that. to do would be to talk to whoever you bought your batteries from mm -hmm. and ask them, hey, will this charger work with my batteries? Um, in general, the lithium is just going to want consistent voltage. And so that charger probably is an AGM charger that says I can charge lithium, which could be true. So would the charger fry the lithiums or would the lithiums fry the charger? No. Yeah. The, so here's the thing. If you've got a good lithium battery with a good BMS, you're not going to be able to fry it. If it okay. starts trying to put out crazy voltage, it'll turn off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Cause it's smart. It's smart. Cause yeah. I can look at same, it on same thing. So like, you know, you, you've heard of people boiling their batteries because the charger didn't turn off once it was charged. You can't do that with lithium. You've because, heard of people boiling their batteries. Oh, hundred, dude, that happens all the time. Uh, on the on the lead acid side because what, there's, there's like liquid a cauldron? in it. So well, they'll have a charger they think automatically turns off that doesn't, and so they're just they never stop putting a charge in it. So they're like, let's put it in boiling water. No, it's in, inside the battery. Oh, boils. boiling it inside yeah, the battery yeah, box the, the because acid, it gets too hot. The acid's and boiling. Bubbles. Dude, yes. I thought you had people that have no, like a, no, no, no. That's how dumb I am. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Oh so, my gosh. but I'm saying Can a lithium this part can't, out of the show. Yeah, uh, a lithium can't do that because oh, again, with the proper BMS, it'll turn itself off. <laughs> boiling batteries. I really could have gone without saying that one. Yeah. I felt like I've done well. <laughs> you're, you're proving, you're proving. You I'm know, smarter yourself. though. That's good. I'm, I'm becoming, uh, this was the one that I had. Peter said, you also can't charge lithiums below freezing temperatures. You have to put a blanket around your batteries to charge them. Uh, again, I got I, a I, boat. I'm, I mean, I'm headed the yeah. first week of March to you follow for the opens right. and it's sometimes below freezing out in the garage. Do I need to be worried about this? No. So it, once again, it'll come down to different manufacturers, different specs. Uh, for us, all we say is if you're below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below freezing, to charge it at no more than 10 amps. And what that does is on a lithium, uh, if it's an extremely cold cell and you put try to put a ton of voltage in, it could deteriorate the lifespan. It's not going to break a battery. It's not going to blow it up or, you know, it's going to potentially affect the long-term life. So it's that 2,500 cycles we talked about. Yep. It could shorten that. Um, you would never see it. Uh, and here's the thing. All those temperature ratings are internal. So inside that battery, inside your garage, inside the boat, if it is zero degrees, um, then it is everything is frozen outside. So you, the, the only time this really comes into play is the RV side where they need blankets and I things gotcha. like that. I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, or heated batteries. You know, there, there's there's stuff like that out there. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk uh, Bass for Becker's MPFL, MLF. Okay. Yeah. Who knows what else we'll get into. Sounds good. It's uh, BTL on a Wednesday. Matt Looney with Pro Guide Batteries. We will be back right after this. Elite Series Pro, Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic, that gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out. For your the great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastics from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the Cliffhanger Worm and the Ramtail Craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country, and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors including Pearl Shad which has this bleached out white look but it's got this pearlescent really really pretty. We've got Copper Shad which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back really really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got 
the matte sexy shad just a really different looking color for a crankbait so you want to give them a little different look that matte sexy shad is definitely the one to go with all these colors are available in the original little john and the md are you looking to install your own fishing electronics the solution is the bass tank power harness it takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns back by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success, in my opinion. In the last couple of years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now the casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is going to handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. All right, welcome back. Final segment here with Matt Looney from uh, Pro Guide Batteries. And I also want to point out, uh, so, you know, I dropped my phone in the lake at Hartwell. It's good. Uh, I don't know if you heard about that. I debacle. did not. So, and that was the one, that was the one where I, I, I had I had no backup for it. Like I'm kind of tech savvy, but then really not. You didn't do but that. But I had didn't have the iPhone backup. It's like, hey, yeah. your phone is not backed up. And I'm like, yeah, what you know, you get that right, whatever. Yeah. So then when I dropped it in the lake, it obviously went dead. And then I didn't know my iCloud password, password, which took like eleven days. It was absolute debacle. But what I have found then, especially since moving the studio to this place, and then you know, you're telling me about apps. I mean, I've got you know, like VRBO, two different insurances, the Sea Monster, the Pro Guide Power, my Sam's Club, my bank, sport. I've got, I, I went through a deal where I downloaded all the apps. Right. And uh, new sponsor for 2023, Omnia Fishing. I was on their website and there's a big thing here. It says Omnia app. So I downloaded the Omnia app, yeah. which if you, I, I had, polish peed on last year from it and stuff they have a really cool app really? it's super easy like you just lo log it in it has all your stuff in there already you just do like categories whatever new arrivals the whole nine thing badass omni app really yeah and then uh ground shipping just five dollars for any order less than fifty dollars free for orders over fifty dollars and it will ship the same day if you order it before 1 p.m. Central Time. That's crazy. It's good stuff. So yeah. you can just go on the app. You got everything logged in. You need this. Click, click. It's shipping. So today. you're doing everything through the app. Like I could order something right now on the app and it would ship this today. Yeah. We are probably tomorrow or the next day. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good stuff. All right. Uh, let's get into a little fishing stuff. Okay. Great battery stuff. Like I said, if you have any questions, oh, let's put a bow on the batteries. You have questions. Based on the last segment, based on the last hour talk, like I said, we could go for three hours on this. Go to proguidebatteries.com, all one word. Click on the contact us. Yep. Answer your questions, put your name in, that type of stuff. You personally lay eyes on that. That's yep. your job to answer it. Yep. yep. So if I'll I get, get everything. Of, okay. Yeah, I'll get everything answered now. If it uh, if it goes crazy, I got to come back to you, but no. I hope it goes crazy. No, I do too. People, I do but too. that's a BTL listeners are big on that. I feel like we have yeah. the most educated fan base in the industry. Hundred percent, and, and it's the thing you need to be educated on. Yeah, batteries you need. But to just know. as far as as far as the emails that I get about breaking down tournaments or techniques, batteries, right. boat, all that stuff. Yep. Love getting listener emails. That's awesome. Yeah. Matt at basszone.com. 
I'm getting better at answering them too. Good. But I read. See you don't answer all. mine, but. <laughs> uh, where was I going with that? Oh, uh, fishing wise. So you not only do this, we talked a little bit about the family, but you are, you're fishing the MPFL. Now we had mm -hmm. Kevin Rogers on yesterday. He's fishing the MBFL and the Invitationals. You yep. fished the MPFL for some of last year. Then you had a kid, which is right. understandable. And then didn't you also have some surgery or something? Yeah. So, so the first, it's been crazy. So first year of MPFL compete at Ufala, Alabama, room in Wasoka, watch him win. Awesome. Get home. Uh, the week before I leave for our second event, I blow my ACL, uh, ACL, MCL, medial lateral meniscus, just blow the whole knee out. Um, so had to have reconstructive surgery very quickly. Uh, so I had to take a medical hardship. So got into last year, uh, everything going great and f fishing wise, uh, my wife's pregnant. So I knew like, you know, the timing wise, well, it just happened to fall right when I think I, I missed two events last year. Yep. Um, and it, it just came down to the, the event right when she was born. And then right at the end of the year, you know, we were moving, we were doing that. And so it was just like, man, it was, it was crazy. And, uh, you know, the, the crew over at MPFL were super, super good to, you know, understand that. Um, and, and, you know, didn't, didn't hold a grudge that I didn't, I mean, obviously I still paid for the events and everything, mm -hmm. but it was like, um, they were super understanding. And then going into this year, I talked about it at the end of last year, you know, initially I wasn't signed up because of those changes. I, I wasn't a huge fan of them. Uh, they made the changes that they have now and, you know, signed right back up, uh, excited to get this season rolling. And that they, ch yeah, they changed the one to Pickwick. From yeah, so the first event, so uh, first events in Pickwick, the I think it starts the 11th or 12th, just when practice like starts. Big angry of March. Mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, and it should be should be a good time. So um, it's it's a couple of weeks before the elites were there two years ago when it flooded like crazy. Uh, so hopefully we don't have those conditions. Oh, but, that was chaos. Yes. I remember like everyone was smashing them, and then all of a sudden it was in the parking yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, and it was hard to. Oh, that was a. That was probably one of the top three fun elite series events to watch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because there was some serious whitewater rafting going on. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that was a cool one. If it does it again, at least we'd have a footprint of, <laughs> hey, this is probably what the fish are doing. Um, but that same time, that same time of year, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't have to deal with that. Because everyone, you know, everyone you talk to is smash them in practice, and I would love to go down there and smash them to start the year. All right. Uh, the other thing that you're very passionate about uh, that has what are you five years into bass for beckers now yeah yeah so well yeah, four years Started four years into bass for beckers mm -hmm. now uh we talked about that uh last year i think you were on the show and gave away a crappie trip this fall talk to that dude yeah. he's down in texas i said hey when i get the new boat when we get it dialed in and i'm on a bite you can roll up and we'll have a day of slamming big crappie awesome uh he was all in for that uh, but that is, uh, that is going strong still, right? Yeah. Going strong right now. We are actually in the process of building a new site. Um, that's what and, it looks like now. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, I've got it. You got to pull it up. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we're, we're in the process of building a new site because basically to purchase tickets pr on this site currently, you have to go to like a third party page. Yep. Um, and we want to make sure we want to keep everybody on our page. So everyone's comfortable that there were some, there were some people that uh, weren't comfortable with giving their credit card information yeah, to a third party you. anyway. Um, but no fantastic deal. It's a 501 C nonprofit. Yeah. I mean, 501 C three fully... nonprofit federally recognized, you know, Skeeter Yamaha backed it up uh, from the start. They're the ones that, you know, I, I, I've pitched this dream to everybody. Hey, mm -hmm. this is what I want to do. Um, you know, Real quick, I'll say my nephew was diagnosed in 2017 at nine years old with Becker's muscular dystrophy. That's why it's called Bass for Becker's. Um, and we were having to sell T-shirts to send them to summer camp. And it was like I could sell a $25 T-shirt that no one's ever going to wear and probably not want to buy. Or I could sell $25 raffle tickets. That's a tax write off. And you could win an $80,000 boat. Um, so we like I said, I had this idea. I pitched it to a bunch. I was currently working with Skeeter. Uh, Yamaha jumped on board full swing power poles on board full like everyone's coming in uh, and that we build out this awesome boat the tournament boat I use throughout the year then we give it away at the end of the year so Tyler Mims just won this past year mm -hmm. seems like a great dude veteran has a small business that he owns like this super awesome guy super cool to see him win it uh, and everyone has been so far every winner I've had has been awesome uh, the cool thing is we deliver the boat to them um, so like the first guy was in Arizona. So we went to Lake Pleasant and did that. And then, you know, the next guy was in Texas, this guy, uh, he's up in Ohio. So we're going to go fishing on Erie when I deliver the boat to him this spring. So, 
uh, he said that he can get me on some four pound smallmouth on a chatter bait that'll jerk the rod out of my hand. So, uh, on a chatter bait. on a chatter bait. So that has my attention. Yes. So anyway, super awesome deal. Uh, we've been able to raise a lot of money through this. I already have the new Skeeter actually goes into production on Friday uh, of this week. So um, should be picking that up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, just, just couldn't be more excited about it. Very nice. Who all? Let's see if you can remember this. Who all's running pro guides on tour now? On the on the, on the elite series. The elite series. Elite series is John Sokup, Bradley Hallman. Oh, Bob, you got Hallman. I did get Hallman. Yeah. Nice. Bradley Hallman, Bob Downey, um, Mike Iconelli. Oh my goodness. Is name. Gleason running up? Gleason. Yeah. And I there, told there's, you. There's one more. There's six. Oh my goodness! You're gonna you're getting me in trouble right now. Um, you want me to pull up the list? There. Well, the guys are. I might. Would I be able to? Oh no, you don't know who it is. <laughs> you do. I know. Okay. I Soka Palman. Soka Palman Downey. Downey. I can. Bob Downey's please. a good dude. I've had yes. him on BTL too. He's very underrated. Yes. He's yes. friggin' sharp. Yes. I can only listen. Bryant Smith. That's why he's bringing oh, to the elite. California guy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, MPFL guy. Yes. Came from MPFL, fishing there. Uh, then on the other side, we've got Alton Jones, Alton Jones Jr., James Elam. You got Elam. Elam. You're got going Cl Oklahoma heavy. Cliff Pace. Um, you know, also under – very underrated Cliff Pace personality-wise. You know the yes. whole game face, Cliff Pace yes, thing? Yes, 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 yes. He's and hilarious. I talked to him on the phone. He keeps me rolling. Yeah, so here's the deal. You catch him at a, at a tournament – Right. Not the most jovial character. Right. You catch him at an outdoors expo on, say, a Saturday afternoon when he's been there Thursday, Friday, and it's a Saturday. Probably not the chat guy home. you'll get around. Yeah. <laughs> you get him in his element around some balsa baits. Yeah. In, in a relaxed environment. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It, it, it's just, I love talking to Cliff Pace. Yes. Like the challenge to have him on BTL would be like, dude, can we get non-professional cliff pace because it's still professional it's just right. dude, the guy has an awesome personality have 100%. you seen the the glimpses of it oh yeah 100 percent. And, and the cool thing is like he's all the time challenging me he's very intelligent yeah so like smart. he he has these battery questions that like even i'm just like i never even thought of that like let's go you know and uh so it's been great he's running all agms uh that's just his thing that's been i him, would expect you know? nothing less yeah so he's running all agms <laughs> balsa cranks right. and agm yeah all right so you got uh aj a aj jr yeah cliff pace james elam james elam um jeremy lawyer jeremy lawyer um i'm trying to think another dude with great stories yes 100 and he's been with pro guide for forever it's been yeah. awesome you know he lives close um, There's a bunch of those guys in like the Ozarks. Like is Pete Winters? Pete stuff, Winters, still yeah. like a guide. There. Oh, hundred percent. He's been uh, guiding for over thirty years and, and used our batteries ever since. It's it's been all. He's, he's see. Steve said I've met Pace. Not impressed. Cliff Pace is a, has a sneaky good personality, and he's hilarious. Yeah, he's really he really is hilarious. Like I said, shooting shooting the bull with him at an right. outdoor expo or something. Not his cup of tea, especially not on the scene. last day of the expo. No, it's not or, his scene. Right. But, but no, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one on this side too. But that's fine. It, you, Chris, you put me on the Christy. spot. No, no, okay. no. I'm, I'm, yeah. People are guessing. <sighs> what who are they guessing? Poche. No, not Poche. No, and then you've got some guys that are just running. Oh, we got a ton of people just run. And, and here's the thing: that's how even I can alley. That's Is how Littner running one. No. no. Oh, he's running the one on the cranking side. Yeah, he's oh. got. He's got. I think bioino lithium. Okay. Um, but there's so many different lithium companies there, out there. Well, it is. And and I think you'll see some of that go away um through through some tough economies coming up. Um but you were talking about that. It's like the trolling motor wars of or it's like the cooler wars of five years ago and the trolling yeah. motor wars of three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Now 100%. it's the lithium wars. Yeah, you, you went to an expo and there was 30 cooler companies. Now there's like four or five good ones, right? And yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be the same way. It's gotta be hard to sell. Cause it's just yeah. a box that sits there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's hard to, to market, right? Yeah. <laughs> cause, cause you don't ever see it. It's inside your boat, right? It's, it's not, it's not a bait laying on the deck. It's not. Um, but anyway, yeah, no. So it's, it's been good. And uh, I, I'm excited about this season coming up, the, the team that we have on that side. And of course we've got invitational guys at the, at the wazoo as well uh, that we guys. support opens guys. Like, we, but the cool thing I was saying with like Iganelli. He came to us because he had had battery problems for forever. We go in at the factory at Bass Cat, and he said, I ran your batteries for two years, just the factory batteries. 
didn't have an issue. I want to work with you. Like, so, and, and you know, it's cool. It's very cool to be in the industry and have guys like that coming to you instead yeah. of you chasing them, you know, uh, same thing with Bob Downey. He ran our batteries from the factory because he runs a bass cat and he's yeah. like, Hey man, you know, no issues. I'd like to partner up. So, so the only, I don't think I was, yeah. The only issue I've ever had with the AGMs mm -hmm. was it was a summertime tournament. I had a late boat draw, but I got on the water early. So I trolled around and my check-in time was 6.30 p.m. Wow. And all I did all day was throw a chatterbait at docks and whatever bank I came across. So I right. covered miles and miles and miles. I'll never forget this because at like 6.10, I'm like, my juice is kind of going dead. And like the last dock that I had juice on before I had to go in, I caught one that called. Wow. But that's the only time my AGMs I ever. Yeah. And, and it's, you ran out of fuel, right? It's fuel tank. Yeah. I've run out of fuel. I've also, well, I was running AGMs this past year when I dropped my phone in the lake and I was so pissed off Yeah, because I couldn't find, I, it was so bad that I couldn't get to my VRBO. Oh, because because I didn't have anyone's contact. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have anything. So I ended up at a, a micro tell hotel and i was so ticked off i went in and got a room and i just left my boat outside and i practiced all day on that sunday did not plug it in nothing and then i went out and practiced all day monday yeah i, I got off the water at 10 to go get a new phone right. but then i practiced all day monday so i went two full days on the agms and practice without charging them. when you had powerful charge so that's gonna no, help I didn't. oh you didn't no that was last year oh dang yeah, those are awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's throw up some uh, let's throw up some banners for our YouTube listeners. The first one says, "Make sure you subscribe to BTL on YouTube and give us a review on iTunes." That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, the next one says, uh, "BTL Day Four merch and uh, BTL merch available at Basson.com under the shop BTL tab." I'm sure Frank will be sporting his Day Four shirt. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one, and this is probably the most important. Pro Guide Batteries, 10% discount code BTL. <laughs> yes. You never is, talk about it, but it gets used a lot. So. What does that work on? Uh, so it works on all lithium or AGM. And it's only it's simply because I can't ship uh, flooded batteries through UPS. So uh, lithium AGM, I can ship it directly to your door. It's free shipping online, plus your code saves them 10%. Okay. So ProGuideBatteries.com, when you check out, just type in BTL, capital B, B capital T, capital L. Yep. Save you 10%. Uh, which is pretty substantial, especially if you get, you know, a whole setup. So we've got bundles on there as well uh, that have a charger and everything and it works on those. Yep. So. And if you're looking for it, it helps BTL too, because whenever it uses a code, it yeah. shows the people listen to the show. Yeah. So I'm taking advantage of it. Like I said, you sponsor the show, you have sponsored the show, you sponsor me on the Bassmaster Opens, but I mm -hmm. want to take advantage of the, uh, the expertise right. uh, that exists within the industry to better understand it. So I, uh, I feel like that's a. I feel like this is a power pole charge situation to close the show out, Matt. Right? Yeah. Like, like you're helping me. I'm helping you. We're charging each other's batteries. There we go. So you're starting way, to understand it. Is yeah. that a good way to end it? There. <laughs> that is. That is. Now I know what all my batteries do, guys. Like I said, if you have questions, go to the uh, Pro Guide Batteries page. Click yep. on the contact us. Anything else you want to get in here? Where can people follow you this year on the MPFL? Yeah. So all uh, my Instagram, Facebook, everything is just Matt Looney Fishing. Um, but the bigger thing I would love if you follow Bass for Beckers, like that is, that is my passion project. That's what I care about most, um, raising money for the kids with muscular dystrophy. So, uh, give that a follow, follow me on, on my pages and, uh, hopefully we'll go win a couple tournaments this year. Yeah. We'll end it with Clay Williamson's comments. I never look forward to these shows, but I learned the most from them. Hey, I love it. <laughs> All right. This has been another edition of BTL Bass Talk Live with Matt Looney with Pro Guide Batteries. Folks, it's going down. Frank Scalish is in Oklahoma headed to the studio right now, tomorrow. Who knows when else we're going to go live. We're eventually uh, probably maybe do some surprise live stuff. I don't know what we have going on, but Frank is in Oklahoma. Tomorrow, day four, number 100, and the drop of the color seven. We're going to wrap this up. I'm going to have Matt go out and look at the batteries in the back of my boat, make sure everything looks good. Everything's dialed in. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. This has been another edition of BTL. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow. See ya.